board. So welcome everybody to our session today. We're talking about record management in the new metadata editor. It is September 8th. We will begin very shortly with Itai Goldsman, product manager here at Ex Libris, giving us an overview, an introduction, and then later on, future plans, what we've been doing and will be doing around the new metadata editor. And then in the middle, we're going to have a break where I come in. I'm Yoel from Ex Libris, and I'll be showing a live demo of several of the latest developments in the new metadata editor. So Itai, I'm gonna turn this over to you right now and give you all the presenting rights. One moment, please. I gotta move everything around here. Th thank you very much, Joel. You are now yeah. a presenter. Go ahead, Itai, take it away. Okay. I'm starting to share my screen, you should see. We see. You. Great. Okay. Thank you very much all for joining. Uh, as uh, you all mentioned, I'm going to start uh, uh, some kind of intro, and then the main part will be demonstrating the new feature of the new metadata editor. Uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to use the question and answer uh, on the WebEx, uh, and we can address them uh, during the uh, session. Also, we'll have some time at the end uh, for a question that you didn't have a chance to ask that came up later. Okay, so I would like first to start uh, with saying a big thank you uh, for the UX focus group. Uh, we work and working a lot with them uh, around and especially uh, the new metadata editor as part of a more general project of usability improvement. Uh, in this part, uh, the, they are um, highly uh, collaborating with us, uh, starting from the phase of the ID uh, and through all the development cycles uh, and eventually testing and, and making sure everything is work as expected uh, and according to the, with the community. Uh, and again, I think it's a very important part uh, uh, of our process here of developing the new metadata editor. I want to go quickly through a few uh, design concepts we use. So a little bit put a spotlight on and why we did things the way we did it. And later on, I, I'm sure you will see it uh, during the presentation. Uh, we started with the uh, uh, the notion of making sure that the various type of cataloger, um, the various type of cataloger are still uh, uh, able to use uh, in the various way uh, they can see. Uh, it will best just to make sure there's no background noise if everyone will mute. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, what we Consider is both a original cataloger and copy cataloger and light cataloger when we thought about the new metadata editor. We also make sure that it's very clear where you're working, if it's a, you're working on ed editing the records or a template or a rules, that's something you clearly can see. And I'll mention a little bit more about the templates that are coming soon. And uh, we make sure that you got all the details you need on the record in a way that is organized in an efficient way and just a click away when you need it. Another important principle was making sure the navigation in general will be smoother and also the menu will adjust and, and provide the actions you need according to the type of the records you are editing, for example, if it's authority, if it's a bibliographic record, a holding record, or uh, other types of uh, uh, templates and rules, and so on. The next set of uh, uh, concepts we use is making sure uh, you have all kind of uh, nice tools that helps you while you're editing, and doing uh, your workflows. 
uh, with the metadata editor. So example is adding the colors of the fields, subfields, and indicators, making them uh, clear to you while, while you're editing. Uh, and other elements here, you will, I'm sure, uh, you, I will uh, show you a lot of them. Another important principle is the ability uh, to reduce the time that it takes to open a, um, a record, and that's something we use the principle we call always on. You have the editor always ready, and uh, Yoel will demonstrate how it works uh, in real time. You can see how quickly it, it improves it. Another important feature uh, and way of thinking of how again, to work efficiently with the MD Editor, is the ability to send to the MD Editor, to push uh, to the MD Editor, to the working queue, uh, records you're interested uh, to work on, and uh, you will see it in the demonstration as well. Uh, one of the major uh, feedback we got is we need as much as possible space for editing. And that's what we've done. We're unable to collapse everything that is possible so you'll get, uh, you know, a longer uh, uh, view of the record, meaning you can see more uh, rows as well as more text, which should help you editing in a more efficient way and update uh, records. So these are the, the main things uh, I want to mention before uh, I'm switching now to a uh, Yoel uh, presentation and demonstrating all the feature. Again, feel free to ask questions uh, during the demonstration and later. Uh, after the demonstration, I will share with you the, our future plan for the new metadata editor. Thank you. For now, uh, you all come back to you. Joel, can you hear us? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you now. Everybody should hear me now and should see me in one second. Great. Okay, you see me and hear me, correct? Every, okay, everybody's saying they hear me. Great. Okay, so I'm not going to be showing any PowerPoints. I will be showing everything live. For anybody interested in seeing a PowerPoint, you can come to this page here. This is under ALMA Training, Extended Training, Presentations and Documents, Resource Management. There's a section here, the new metadata editor, September 8, 2020 session. Here's where you can get all of the information. As we speak, I'm going to be sending that out to everyone. You've all got it. Let's begin. So I'm in the new metadata editor. And before we even begin, I want to point out two developments, which we already have had since the beginning, but they're key fundamental parts of the new metadata editor. So I want to point them out again. The first one is the push to the metadata editor. Rather than needing to click edit record in order to bring a record into the metadata editor, I can multi-select records and I can push them to the metadata editor. I can say select all or I can select specific ones or one at a time I can say push to the metadata editor I'm going to take all four of these and push them to the metadata editor. And they will be pushed to the metadata editor provided that I can edit those records. For example, if it's locked, I can't push it to the metadata editor. If it's assigned to a different user, I can't push it. Or if it's a cataloging level lower than my cataloging level and I use the cataloging level feature, then I can't push it. So now if I go into the metadata editor, I will automatically see these records in the metadata editor, and I don't need to do edit on each of them. The second major point behind the new metadata editor is it's always on. It's like if you're working on a PC and you left your Excel and your Word open, 
and you want to go back to it, you go to the bottom to the taskbar and you just click it. You don't need to open it up. And that was something that took a long time, longer than desired, let's say, in the classic metadata editor. Uh, so here, as you see on the bottom left, we have an icon here. I just put my mouse on it and I have the pop-up tip called Show Metadata Editor. And if I click the Show Metadata Editor, now the metadata editor opened. Did you see how fast that was? I'm going to do it again just so you can see how fast that worked. I'm going to say that I'm looking for something else. Let's say we want digital titles. And I say, I want Taiwan and I want something else. And then I'm in the middle of working here and I decide now I want to go to the metadata editor. All I have to do is click this icon on the bottom, show metadata editor, watch how fast it opens. I'm going to click, there we are, it immediately opens. Now, you'll also see here that any record which I pushed to the metadata editor appears with the pushed. Again, I'm going to close these records just to show the push one more time. I'm going to click release the displayed messages. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. So again, I can come along into Alma. I can search, for example, library science, Taiwan, get some results, and I decide that I want to catalog this one, and I want to catalog this one, and I want to catalog this one, and maybe this one. So I go push selected to the metadata editor, they're in the metadata editor. And then I can continue with whatever else I want to do, do another search or two, take a record, push to the metadata editor, and now that's in the metadata editor also. I go into the metadata editor, I click show metadata editor, it immediately opens. Any record which was pushed here has a push sign. I'm going to release those one more time so I can start the actual demo. That was a feature that already existed, and I wanted to point it out because it's a fundamental part of saving time using the new metadata editor. Okay, so let's now go take a record here. Maybe I want to take lean in uh, women work will and I'll just fix my spelling. Those of you who have been in my sessions before know spelling is not my strong point. Okay. Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to take this record here, the first one, edit this record. Now I can also use the old fashioned edit instead of pushing it and going in, and it automatically opens the record. This one does not say pushed. It doesn't say pushed because I clicked edit. So now I'm in a record here. So we got search options. The search options in the classic metadata editor, we had the search resources, the browse shelf listings, the browse bib headings. They were in the tools menu. <clears throat> As you see here, we don't have a tools menu. We've broken down into sections what was in the tools menu. And we have now search and browse. Under search and browse, we have the shelf listing, the browse bibliographic headings, and the search resources. If I click search resources, then I get my record here, which I can display larger by collapsing the navigation pane. I'm going to click the chevron on the bottom, this list of this uh, picture of two icons to the left. I collapsed it. Now I can see more of each. As you see, just like the classic metadata editor, it automatically filled in the data from the record I have open, and I can clear all, or I can take one field at a time. I just like to search the ISBN instead of all the other stuff. I'm going to search that, and I didn't even see what, res what uh, search resource I'm searching. I believe it's Library of Congress. And we get the record, and then from the record, I can do all of the same ones that I've always had before. And as you can see on the left, for saving room on the screen, the original record 
has collapsed. Here, when I put my mouse on it, I see that I'm on lean in, woman work, the will to lead, but to save room on the screen, it has collapsed. I'm gonna click it just to show, and now I see the actual record. Okay, so that's the search resources. Then we've also got, I'm gonna close the search resources for now. Now we also have, for example, the browse bibliographic headings, and we have the shelf listings. So I'm gonna do browse shelf listing, just as an example. And again, I can bring this larger, and then classic metadata editor, you probably recall, there was an icon here on the top right with a little arrow. Here I just close whichever ones I don't want open. So I don't want this record open anymore. I want this one, the one on the right big. So I've got an X right here at lean in, woman work, the will to lead. I'm gonna close it. And now everything's free. So if I say search browse, shelf listing, now I've got the whole screen to myself, and I can say I want to search the holdings call number for Library of Congress classification, for the main library, for the general location, for Z6 Library Science Books. Click go, and there we are. Anything I might have that starts with Z6, I've got, and if I don't have Z6, then of course I won't get it. Okay. Uh, and if I have Z11, even better in this case, then I get my Z11, Z113, Z115, Z115, Z, etc. So that's the search options which have moved from the tools menu to a dedicated menu, search and browse. Another nice feature, if I were to search electronic titles for, for example, diversity, inclusion, equality, or any, uh, any record which is in the community zone, then when I click now to put it in the metadata editor, either by saying uh, push to metadata editor or edit record, I get an indication that it's in the community zone. For example, I'll take uh, race, gender, and the fight for equality. Edit record. It's in the metadata editor now. And you see here, next to where it says Mark 21 Bib, I have the, the icon of the community zone. I also have it in the records list. My records list now is collapsed because that's what I did before because I wanted a larger screen. However, now I'm going to click the the expand record list icon, which my mouse is on now on the bottom, to make that one bigger. And now I also see here that this is a community zone record. Let me pin this, pin this open. Handbook, here it is, and you see right here, to the left of handbook, I have the two people icon indicating that this is a community zone record. There's a lot of indications. We're going to see more. We've put a lot of indications throughout the metadata editor for records to know the various stages that they're at. And I'm going to release these and go to the next one. I'm sorry I'm moving perhaps too quick, but I do want to make sure, based on the earlier session we did today, that I'm not caught and don't have enough time to do anything. Let's take a look at another one here. Uh, and this deals with notes. Let's take, for example, uh, Library and Information Science Research in Oceana by Gia Tina Du with introductory essay by Alicia Hen. And let's bring that into the metadata editor. And let's take a look here. And let's say I want to add a note. So previously, in the classic metadata editor, if I wanted to add a note, I needed to first do view notes and then from the list of notes, click add note, which was not very intuitive. Once someone knew that that's how you do it, fine, but it wasn't very intuitive. It was view notes and then from the list, add. Now we have a dedicated add note. If we go into record actions, I can click add note. Now allow me here before I click add note to differentiate between the record actions and the editing actions. 
The record actions, as the name suggests, are actions which cover the entire record. For example, to release the record, to reload the record, to validate the record, in this case, to add a note. The note is on the level of a record. We don't add a note per field. The editing actions are, as the name suggests, for editing, and it primarily, if not exclusively, deals with fields, add a field, remove a field, open the form of a field, get information on the field, et cetera. So I'm in record actions, and I'll say add note. And let's say, please check the LC headings. We have several records from Alicia Penn, and we should see how we catalog the others. Okay. So now I've added a note. Now notice before I click OK, on top, all I have is a picture of the house, Mark 21 bib, and the level of the cataloger. I click OK. And now I also have an indication that this record has a note. You can see a little icon here of a note. It looks like a piece of paper with a little pencil on the bottom right. I put my icon on it. I have record has one note. Same thing in the navigation pane. Record has one note, and of course, I get that nice informatory pop-up, which, by the way, does not cover the record. One of the complaints in the early developments of the new metadata editor was these pop-ups would cover important information. So here, it goes over to the side. Now, this is not a bibliographic note. It's not a 590 field, 500 field, whatever. <coughs> it's an administrative note for the use of the catalogers. Okay, so that's the add note. Now, while we're on the subject of these indicators, let's say I take this record and I make a change and I want to change inside here. I notice that on the cover page, uh, it says not with introductory essay by Alicia Han, but it says with introductory essay by Alicia Wen Ting Chin. So I add the Wen Ting, but I still need to check this. So I'm going to save it as a draft. Save draft. I didn't yet save it. If anyone goes into the repository search or Primo, they're not going to see introductory essay by Alicia Wen Ting Han. It's going to be just by Alicia Han. So now I have an indication here that it's a draft. These uh, square um, icons that have a word in them, we call them a badge. So there's a badge here that this is a draft. It's not an icon, it says draft. The one that has no is an icon. The one that it's a draft states that it's a draft. Uh, and then of course, if I save this record now, which I'll do, or let's get rid of, I decide I don't want the Wen Ting, I just want Alicia Hen. I can get rid of that, make any other changes. Once I save it, it's no longer going to be a draft. Now the draft badge is gone and we no longer have it. Now, while I have this on the screen, this is not a new development in the past couple of months. We had this in the last session we did. We did a session on the new metadata editor a few months ago as well. If I click now the warnings, if you recall in the previous metadata editor on the bottom, there was a section which had information on fields and had the warnings. And it took up about a sixth, one six, one over six, one sixth of the whole screen. It took up about a third of the editing section. Now, instead of putting all the notes on the bottom, you just see that you have warnings. You can see here the, the yellow brown where it says you have warnings. Then if I click that, now it pops up. So it's not always taking all of my important uh, web, uh, web real estate, as they call it. It's just there and it's minimized under normal circumstances. So I don't need to worry about that. And by the way, the field information, let me just point out while I'm here, I've got these three dots at the end. And instead of having on the bottom one sixth of my screen being taken up by the lower pane of the editing section, I can just click the three dots and you see here at the end of any field, 
click the three dots, go to field information, and then it opens up the field information. That's, that's a nice saving of, of a screen, very nice saving a screen. You, you see here two themes running around here, saving space, saving time. We're saving space the way the whole metadata editor is set up here. We're saving time with the push to the metadata editor and the always on. Okay, the other theme we could call it easy indication. There's pictures and icons everywhere to tell people what's going on. But you'll, you'll discover the themes without me even saying them as we go on. Okay, assigning records to another cataloger. Let's say I want to take this record. I'm now signed into the metadata editor as a, as a cataloger who is Alicia Penn. She also happens to be the author, but she's also a cataloger. And I want to assign this now to another cataloger. So we have a new dedicated action called assign record. And that's what we're going to use. In the old metadata editor, if you wanted to assign a record to another cataloger, we went to file, then we did assign record to another cataloger. Here I've got record actions and assign record to another cataloger. So now I'll assign this to another cataloger. I'll assign this, for example, to Elia. Elia is one of our senior catalogers here at Only University. And I'll say, hi, Elia that we have the correct RDA syntax in 336, 337, and 338. And you know what? I'll even send her an email and assign this to her. And now this is going to disappear from me because I'm assigned it to her. She will get a mail now. I happen to have access to Elia Zafrani's email. And here it is, 5.29 p.m. That's my local time. And it says here, 5.29 p.m., zero minutes ago. Hi, Elia. Please confirm that we have the correct RDA syntax in 336-337-338. Sincerely, Ms. Alicia Hen. Okay. And when... Elia signs in, Alicia is going to sign out. Elia will sign in. I happen to have an automatic login for Elia. Uh, when she goes into the metadata editor, which is always on, and will take 0 0.0001 seconds to open, I click show metadata editor. There we are. We're already in the metadata editor. She has this appearing here, and back to that third theme that I pointed out, that everything is, uh, has easy indicators of what's going on. We see both that there is a note here, and we see that it has been assigned. And Alicia can do whatever, she, uh, Elia can do whatever she would like. Elia comes along and says, okay, yeah, those 336, 337, 338, yep, those look like nice cataloging. Alicia did a nice job cataloging this according to RDA, and then she says, release the assignment. So it's no longer assigned specifically to her. She's all set. Oh, by the way, her cataloging level is too low. Uh-huh. I can take care of that right away because I have permissions to change her cataloging level just to make sure in the future everything's okay. All right. So that's the assigning records. And the indication that the record is, signed, is assigned. I'm just going to go right back in here now that I changed her level. And hop into the metadata editor. There we are, metadata editor. Okay, the next one we want to do is I, I released the assignment so she doesn't have it anymore, which is what I wanted to confirm. Uh, the next one deals with sets. So I'm going to sign out one more time. Go back in as Alicia. So let's do a, let's make a set here. Let's make a physical title set on type A. 
and we have 82 records. Let's say we want Taipei and library science or library. Nothing with Taipei and library, so we'll say Taiwan and library. Or we'll say Taiwan. Okay. And we have 351 records. Oh, I see why we didn't have library. It's because I spelled it wrong. I always say there are no Alma errors. It's a human error. And here we have a classic case. Okay, 26 records. I'm going to save this as a set. I'll call this the Taiwan Library Set. Okay. And now, here it is. We, we recently added that we can catalog this set, and let's see how nice and organized it appears inside the new metadata editor. There we are. So here is the Taiwan library set. Here is, you see, the 26 records. I can easily collapse and expand. I'm going to click this little uh, triangle, I guess I would call it. It says clearly that it's a physical title set. I click the triangle, it collapses. I click the triangle again, it opens, and I decide that I want to catalog Hinshu Mulu. I click on Hsinshu Mulu, and here we have Hsinshu Mulu. So I can take each record. Each record is open, but I, if I want to put it into the editing mode, then I need to go click it. I'll choose, for example, Li Fa, Li Fa Ki Kan Wen. And here we have now Li Fa Ki Kan Wen. So these are all of the records. Some of them by chance have a note. The Academic Library Development Administration in Taiwan has a note. Let's see the view notes. So to add the note, we have record actions, add note. Let's add another note. Maybe we should get more copies. Excuse my bad spelling. And OK. So now I have an indication here. Uh, that it has two notes. You see it says record has two notes. Uh, ours was actually the academic, which by the way, we can sort these. You know, there's so much to show in so little time, but I'm going to do it A to Z. We showed this last time, but you know, it's so nice. I want to do it again. Because now I have a classic case. I want to look for a very specific record, and the easiest way to do it is to sort it by A to Z. Okay, so here's our academic library development. Record has two notes. Now the view notes is under view related data, view notes. Previously, like I said before, there was only view notes, and if you wanted to add a note, you needed to do view notes add. I'll click the view notes, and now we have our notes. We can still add a note manually from here, but I don't need to first do view note under record actions. I have the view notes. I'm going to close that. Under record actions, I've got the add note. Okay, uh, let's move on here. Uh, suppress from discovery. Previously in the metadata editor classic, the suppress from discovery was accessed inside another menu. First you had to do edit or tools, then you got to uh, set management tags, and then you had to go choose uh, suppress from discovery. Now we have a dedicated option here, record action suppress from discovery. Instead of three clicks, it's two clicks. Instead of looking around, it's directly right in front of your eyes. We click suppress from discovery, and then again, a very clear indicator with an eye with a red line through it, showing that this is suppressed from discovery, that third theme that I mentioned. We got the save time, 
We got the save space on the screen. We got the easy indicators. And here you see another example, still yet another example that it's an easy indicator. In fact, this is a nice screenshot we got going on here. We have an indication that this belongs in the institution. It's not a community zone record. We saw before what it looks like when it's a community zone record. We see that it's suppressed from discovery. We see that it has two notes. We see that it's part of a set that I put into the metadata editor. We see that it's marked 21. And we see that it's level zero. It was cataloged with level zero, but I am level 60, a senior cataloger. Okay, let's go on. I see that there's questions coming in and we will take time for the questions, but let me just try to do, uh, keep the flow going here because there are some things we really wanna make sure we cover. Okay, the view related records. Let's go back. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to close all these right now. Release sets. You see, I selected a set, and then I did uh, release. Okay, let's take again, Lean In Woman Work Will to Lead by Cheryl Sandberg. Sometimes it's also by Scott Novell. Uh, Neil Novell, excuse me, Nell Novell. So here it's a Scobell, excuse my uh, mixing up with the beginnings of the first and last name. Okay, so this record, as an example, has related records. Why does it have two related records? We won't get into the whole theory behind related records, but it's got a seven, seven, oh, no, it's got another one pointing it from the other side. So let me just take this one here. And... Uh, let me take a different one. I'll take an action plan for outcome. And it, too, has a related record. If I click that related record, I see that it's the electronic version, which then points back to the physical version. And why does it have a related record? It has a 776 in the electronic version, which is pointing to here, to the physical version. Print version to subfield Z, which is the ISBN, to that. If I edit this, let's push this to the metadata editor. And let's also push the physical ones in the metadata editor. Now that was a good example. I want to get two records in the metadata editor. I don't need to click edit, go in, go back out, do another search. I can just push one, edit the other. Now I'll have them both here. So if I take this record, under record actions, we have the related records. Oh, you know what? Okay. I was going to do this in a different environment, but that's just fine. We'll say view related data, view related bibliographic records. And here we are. So on the left, I have one record. On the right, I have the related record. And of course, I have the indication of how is it a related record. It's a related record because it's the additional form. I'm going to go to the view again, and you can see here I'm using a 776 to go to ISBN 0838908138813, which is right here, 0839008138813, et cetera. Uh, does everyone hear me? Someone just sent in that it's frozen and no sound. Do other people hear me okay? Just say, yes, I hear you okay. Okay, everyone else says it's fine. Okay, so person who said that it's frozen with no sound, it must unfortunately be on your side. The other people are saying they hear me and it's not frozen. Okay, see also for authority records. We haven't even looked at authority records yet. So I happen to have an authority record for one of our most prolific authors, Alicia Hen. And you can see here we've got Hen Alicia, 
seen from, and then it's got her name in other languages, and it also says see also Taiwanese librarians. And if I were to click here in the repository search, I get another authority record for Taiwanese librarians seen from librarians from Taiwan. Now, if I come into Hen Alicia authority record in the metadata editor, there's an option here to search other records with the see also term as a preferred term. This also existed in the classic metadata editor, but you'll see here a little more aesthetic. So I've got Taiwanese librarians here. We've got Alicia Han, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different non preferred terms in two different languages. And while I'm on the 550, I can always choose here the C also, or do Alt Shift N, and it searches now all the authority records of the same type. In this case, they both need to be LC names. And now I see this one here, the Taiwanese librarians, where the C also for my original record is a preferred term of the record that it finds. So I have two authority records now. I arrive to the one with the preferred term Taiwanese librarians by doing a search for the C also on the C also of the original record. Okay, uh, linkage information. Yeah, I'm going to move to another environment. Here. We're at 1744, so I'm going to be very quick here. We you you have just a second? Yeah. I'm sorry to stop. You, if I may, there are two uh, questions that repeat themselves, and I think it, if you can spare uh, one minute to show them, it will be helpful. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, uh, if you can show how you switch from the, uh, again, from the old MD editor to the new one. Okay. Uh, and then showing the, just that it, the icon appears, and, and that's the way to turn it on. And the second thing is uh, how to add uh, holdings when you are in Bible records and using the new menu uh, to all the heads. Okay, if you can okay. show those. Okay, I'd be glad to do that. So I'm going to release these records. If you notice, on the top right, we have an icon to the classic metadata editor here called the old editor. Top right, old editor. I'm going to click that old editor and then confirm. Now it's going to close do all kinds of things behind the scenes. And now I'm prepared here to use only the old ed ed metadata editor from resources. If I go now to open metadata editor, the meta old metadata editor will open. Now you'll also notice I no longer have on the bottom left uh, show metadata editor, because now it's not always on. I have an option here to switch back to the new metadata editor on the top right. And more than that, if I go and search again now for these introductory essay by Alicia Hen, I no longer have the option to do push to metadata editor, or if I search for anything for that matter. So now I want to go back to the new metadata editor, because we all really want to enjoy the latest a state-of-the-art metadata editor. So when I'm in a record in the metadata editor now, I'll have the option to do new metadata editor. And then it tells me well, I'm going to move out and I'm not going to save. And then I'm in the new metadata editor. Now, if I were to search for something, for example, contains anything, so now I again have the push selected to metadata editor, and I have the icon here, show metadata editor. Okay, that's number one. Number two, let's take, uh, let's take something. I'm going to be quick. I know we're really tight on time, but I'm going to be quick. I'm going to search resources. And I'm going to search Library of Congress in WordCat for Taiwan Library Science 
as keywords search. Okay, so we're searching uh, WorldCat and Library of Congress, and I'm going to take Quality Assurance and LIS Education. That sounds like a nice one. I'll say View and I'll say here. Oh, let me collapse that. Okay, that's a lot nicer. And I'll import this. So we can show the adding of the holdings record. Okay, so now I have a bibliographic record. Uh, quality Assurance and LIS Education, International and Comparative Study. I'm going to save this one. Save. So now I've saved Quality Assurance and LIS Education. Now I want to add a holdings record. So I'll click New. I'm on the menu second from the left on the top. I'm clicking the plus next to the new. And then I'm going to click Mark 21 Holdings. Now I have my system set up in a certain way that it's automatically giving me the library and the location because I was playing around one time with my template. We'll talk about templates later. I'm going to make my first indicator zero because I want it Library of Congress. It's going to copy my 050 from the left. I will uh, add inventory from here. For example, add item. I'm in a holdings record, so it knows that's the only thing I can add. I get my physical item editor and save it. And everything's good. If I come now and I were to search for quality assurance in LIS, Library and Information Science, LIS Education, then we will see that record. Ah, it told me I had a duplicate. Uh, so I see the one. Here's the one we just did now. Uh, creation date 0809-2020. That's today, 1648. That's Amsterdam time where the server is. And we've created it and we've added a holdings record. Okay. Show linkage information. I'm almost done here. There was a lot more things we wanted to show. But with when, uh, within one hour, you know, what can you do? Okay, so I'm just going to pop into one other place. You'll have to excuse me. Okay. We're sorry it's down. Okay, no big deal. I'm going to leave that one then for now. Because in any case, we're extremely tight on time. And you know what? Let's do it somewhere else. We can do it anywhere. Already, Ty, do you want 10 minutes now to finish what you've got? Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to do so that. That's, that's actually good the way it worked out. So, Itai, I'm going to pass this over to you. I will stop sharing. And you guys can look at the PowerPoint that I, that I sent the links out to everybody in the show linkage. I always say we need to make these an hour and a half. Maybe we'll start doing an hour and 15 minutes from now on. A little compromise. Okay. Center. <coughs> Take it away. Thank you. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, we see it. I'm going to mute myself. Okay. So just a quick uh, sneak peek here uh, around the template. As you can see, we have here a screenshot showing uh, the template uh, model that is coming uh, with a very similar uh, look and feel, but still has its special navigation pen and special uh, action uh, that uh, are uh, unique to the templates. Uh, still, we have the ability to work both with template and records very easily uh, and to use them uh, as, you, as you want. And that's something that is coming and I'll, I'll show you in a minute when and how. Uh, I will want to go over the rollout plan, uh, the updated one, and explain it uh, what we've done. We're also going to publish it uh, today, uh, this update. And so after getting a lot of feedback from various, uh, from the whole community, and also, of course, uh, discussion we have with the UX focus group around it, we understood more time is needed in order to uh, do two things first to get your feedback and address it 
uh, you know, major issues that are coming up. And second, uh, we want also to give uh, more time and, and opportunity to get used to the new MD as well. We, know, we, we try to make it as much as possible similar to the existing one, but of course much better and, and a lot of uh, thinking about the workflows and the efficiency, but still it sometimes takes more uh, for people to get used to it. So that's something that, uh, uh, well, our intention. Uh, now, uh, what uh, uh, we've done, we kind of gave more time for feedback. Uh, so um, we did came out uh, on this September release with a, uh, uh, to production with the records module, and we are uh, going to get on January to production with the templates. Of course, the whole period of the feedback, we will have uh, both cycles with the UX focus group first uh, uh, looking on it, on the templates, uh, and then later on uh, we release it. And we'll give more time between uh, uh, releasing the uh, templates and the, the rules models, which will come on March. So on March, we're actually going to get, give you the whole functionality of the MDA tool, including all the model. And then we'll still give some three months more uh, until uh, the, all the feedback will be uh, addressed, if there's any major issues, and the new MD editor will become the only one uh, without the classic anymore on June, as you can see here. Uh, so that's something that was important uh, to share with you, so you know the timeline and all those all kind of questions. I w just want to, uh, uh, a quick reminder because I know there's sometimes um, uh, it's not clear the difference, uh, difference between the new layout and the new MD editor. They are both, as I mentioned, under the usability improvement project uh, and what we are doing around it. Um, so this is something the new layout is about the whole Alma. It's about the menu of Alma and, and, and uh, where are the pieces and, and important improvement in that area. It's a parallel track to the new MD editor. And the new layout is also uh, uh, gone out on September with the ability to, to turn it on to the entire uh, institution, and a user can switch it on and off, similar to uh, the MD editor. By November, we will turn it on to all institutions as a default new layout, uh, and, and that's working in parallel. The, the best combination and the best way to work is to work with the new MD editor and the new layout. Then you will get the most benefit of, out of it. Uh, um, the new metadata is required the new layout in order to uh, uh, work in a way, but you can still work with the classic MD editor in the new layout. So I'll take this opportunity and of course uh, uh, encourage everyone and ask your administrator to turn on the new layout starting from September. I, I'm sure you enjoy it and, and find the new ability of module, but again, they are not dependent on each other. It's more like something that benefit each other and working uh, well. I hope that clarified that uh, part as well. Um, I think now if we have probably a few more minutes uh, for questions. Uh, I don't know if there are any. Uh, additional, I've tried to answer during uh, the time you will speak most of the questions, but let's see if we have a few uh, more. Maybe it's worse, also I, I see, um, uh, I hope that it helps uh, to explain the, the push to MD editor uh, ability is related to the new MD editor, you need to turn on the new MD editor. And so it's working both in the current layout and the new layout. Uh, but again, it's most, the best way to work is to turn both of them on the new layout and the new MD editor. That's the, the best way to do it. Uh, and we, we, we recommend it highly. Uh, I want to see if we have more questions questions. I just want to mention there was a few questions about uh, uh, colors and the setting and so on. We, we are picking the colors in a way and that we are still working and testing it from accessibility point of view, something also as part of the new MD editor, we are working on the accessibility. 
Okay, I think we have a lot of questions here. And let uh, you do you think there is any question that repeat themselves and something worth uh, uh, to mention? There's one the, here about if there's an end of life for the old metadata editor. Yes, so yes, there is an end of life. It's coming on June 2021. After that, then uh, old metadata editor will no, no, no longer be available. Okay, um, I know you said you were going to talk more about templates other times. Someone does ask if we have templates set up in the current metadata editor, will they transfer to the new version or will we need to set them up again? So the, the, the templates remain also for the new metadata editor. Uh, you don't need to set them up again. What is recommended is, of course, uh, uh, already now to uh, each user that will choose uh, the template he wants to use as default. That's something each person needs to customize for himself. So that's highly recommended. It can be done already now. Okay. And I think we're out of time in any case now. Okay. So we'll be posting the recording here. You have the link to the PowerPoints. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining us. Ita, you have any final final parting words? No, I want to thank everyone for the so many people joining and, and you know uh, investing their time to learn this uh, really uh, wonderful new metadata editor. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please continue and provide your feedback. And and if there are issues coming up through places and the regular channel, ID exchange is also a good. Uh, Thank you. Great. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye-bye.